I mean, it, listen, it we're talking work. about practice. Playoffs? What are talking about? Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Hello? You play to win the game. I am very excited to talk about sports. Hey everybody, Nick here with the Wednesday Night Sports Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at AF Wednesday. What an exciting weekend of sports action we just had. So let's get things started. First, I'd like to introduce first Logan. How's it going, Logan? Oh, I'm doing great. Especially really great since the Duke Blue Devils just lost. Mamma mia. <laughs> Sounded like you farted in the microphone. <laughs> it was the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep that in oh i definitely am uh the timing of that was pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> alex how's it going i have a confession to make during every aaf game i'm secretly playing let's go pikachu and eevee <laughs> and today i caught a shiny pidgey would you say that your experience with pokemon go uh or sorry pokemon let's go sorry huge difference okay would you say that it resembles what red and blue was to our generation is it just essentially like a remake or is it an entirely different game it's barely the same it's the same because the content is the same but the pacing and a lot of the mechanics are different so uh let's call it a refurbish you know what I'm glad that we're not getting a refurbished version of? Is the final four. Three of the four teams that are in the final four have not... Or, sorry, two of the final four teams have not been in it. One has not been in it since 1984. And then you have Michigan State. Thankfully, they beat Duke earlier today fuck zion fuck coach k i'm leaving that in <laughs> i fucking hate duke thoughts logan as a uh, fuck duke bandwagon guy yes yes if my tar heels gotta go down duke's gotta go down with them i agree i, I was ecstatic um i was watching with my grandfather <clears throat> and my brother who are Duke fans? Oh, oh my grandfather's man! Like, my what? grandfather's like old. My grandfather's like old school. So like, <sighs> he just pulls for whoever's in the state of North Carolina. Oh, okay. So like, he was like really into the game, pulling for Duke, and then my brother's a Duke fan in general. And then like, so he's I'm a bandwagon like, fan, you know? Not not trying to make him feel bad. I'm just like, oh, they should have did this. They should have did that. And then when we got into the car, me and my wife. Like I just, I just like yelled out, like just let out a yell, loud yell, like yeah, Duke lost. Very nice. <laughs> I'm glad that the shoe murderer has been brought to justice. I agree. Um, let's talk about how we got to the final four with the elite eight action. Uh, Auburn going over Kentucky in overtime, seventy-seven. Uh. 71. Oh, when I'm looking at it, it doesn't even show the fucking score. Um, <laughs> early Absolute on, thriller. yeah, early on, it looked like Kentucky was going to take it all the way. And then Auburn just turned it up. Bruce Pearl gave some of them Bruce Pearl magic. Without their best player, might we add. Oh, did you, speaking of without their best player, did you see the picture of... Somebody at Kentucky drew a picture of uh, Okiki. That's his name, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, on a uh, disability scooter. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, you know, the Drake song? Okiki. <laughs> da, da, da. And it, it was something along the lines of that. And everyone got so upset over it. Wow. Okiki <clears throat> is the name of one of the characters in Baba Is You puzzle solving game that just came out for the switch is it a good game i dig it overheats my brain very nice gotta poke hole in my tummy. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I would say the most important game this for this Elite Eight was Michigan State going over Duke. The Zion sensation is over. We can all go back to our regular scheduled programming. Was he the greatest college basketball player of all time? Hell no. Not without a championship. I think it's there's not there's there's it's He's, he's not going to be considered the greatest college basketball because there's, like, people that, like, have played for, like, four years and had great runs. Larry Bird, Michael Jordan. Tyler Hansborough. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> but he had a good career despite not being a real good, like, <laughs> professional player. Yeah. Christian Leitner. Yeah, Christian Leitner's actually a very good one, even though Michael, I hated him. So, I only know him because of the name of the documentary about I hate Christian Leitner. JJ Reddick, even though I don't want to admit it. <laughs> so what's interesting is, is there was this model on uh, the after or the post game show um, on CBS, and she was a Duke fan, even though she didn't go to Duke. It was because her her father was a Duke fan. Mm-hmm. I guess that's in the same realm of me because my dad went to UVA, so therefore I became a UVA fan. Right. Um, but they were asking her these questions, and she just would name these guys like, "Who's the best Duke player of all time?" And she said, "Zion." That means she hasn't watched much at all. Right. And then she said something about Grant Hill as well. I you feel know, like I, that's just a generic answer. Right. I was in. I was in a thread on Reddit today. It was like, uh, what are the greatest pop songs of all time? And people, like, the top answers were all One Direction, Katy Perry. Modern day stuff? Yeah, I was like, you guys haven't listened to music for more than ten years, have you? I was suggesting, or I was um, thinking that you were going to say Michael Jackson. I did say Billie Jean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the king of pop, the originator of pop, kind of. Yeah. So what else I got a pop out of was Virginia going over Purdue <laughs> in what was essentially a road game for Virginia. It was in Louisville, though, uh, even though I guess it's three and a half hours um, from West Lafayette, Indiana, compared to seven hours for Charlottesville, Virginia. So I guess that makes sense. Um, but what a uh, butthole clincher. And the season say. was the season was literally over for Virginia, it felt like almost. Like So one you, of the other guys on the podcast, Bill, who has been <laughs> I said podcast, I meant one of the other mods of AAFB, who's been on the podcast, Bill, uh, is a Purdue alum. My dad is a Purdue alum. So when I started hearing that the game was really close in the fourth quarter, I turned it on and I, I got an illegal YouTube stream. Uh, of a child holding their phone at a television and then just listing off anyone who subscribed to him and talking about how his arms were tired. <laughs> it was highly entertaining. Uh, I reported his channel. I hope I hope you get... Oh, man. Out. Alex, let's just get stitches. I, I, <laughs> I, I, blocked his, I reported his channel when Purdue lost. <laughs> I honestly thought that when they fouled him with five seconds left, that was going to be it. They got the one. And Which time? With the five seconds left when they hit that buzzer. Beat yeah. To tie it. At the end of regulation. The odds are like, that's like the, all, oddest, the lowest odds possible, really, because you got to make the first one, and then the second one you just have to miss it and hope you get the rebound. But it like tipped out perfectly. Just that whole series of events was just perfect. The fact that yeah. Diakite got the rebound, threw it back to Clark, and if it was anybody else, they would have thrown it up. They would have been selfish and went for the game winner from half court. Exactly, but Clark, thankfully, who is, I would say, the leader of the team for UVA, threw it to Diakite, and Diakite just immediately fired it off the second he got it, and it went in. And at first, I thought that we we had won, but then I realized that uh, it was a two point well, game. Chris not Weber, 
Chris Weber was like, for the win! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot it was a two-point game, not a one-point game. But I did, too, like, when he said that. Like, he was like, for the win! And yeah. it's like, wait. <laughs> it's right. a two-point game. <laughs> but I, I thought that, um, that Virginia tying it at the end of regulation took out all the momentum for Purdue. And I told you that last night, but I, I still think it's true. Yeah, because you're you in your mind you think you have that game won. Right. And then like it just it all comes crashing down and it hurts inside. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz we're all real Americans. I thought that Villanova was going to be the villain. But it turns out that UVA stands for United <sighs> Villains Alliance. You know what? Oh. All right, I have a real problem with that. And a lot of people on Reddit are seeming to think that UVA is a true villain in college basketball now. When have we won anything? You have swords in your logo. <laughs> so? You need to accept that about yourself. I, I don't you get the You have swords hate. in your logo. You're, you're a bad guy. Like, I don't get the hate. Like, there's like Carolina fans like that are pulling for Virginia. I don't understand the hate from the rest of the nation like this team has never won anything if anything like this is like i don't know it's like a it's like the chicago cubs of like the ncaa basketball that's an interesting way to put it so i i don't follow college basketball so when i look at you know 15 minutes of the end of a basketball game and then i also read two headlines about how zion is the greatest college basketball player of all time that's all the context I have to make a decision. So nobody else has swords. Uh, <laughs> and I think you're undervaluing how evil that makes you. You're like a pirate. I think I think Javier had swords. Javier had swords? Yeah. Never so does so oh, does Hampton. Yeah. yeah. Look up the Xavier um Musketeers. Like it's got a big X, but like their mascot holds like a a sword like when he's out there like dancing and stuff and then uh, Javier musket boys and then you yeah. have the hampton pirates and then you have the ecu pirates even though they'll never make the <laughs> NCAA no. tournament. but it's why i picked colgate to win the tournament because how can you root against someone so minty fresh and don't forget colgate nearly beat tennessee what could have been would they have been the team that knocked off virginia if they would have beat tennessee hell no <laughs> <laughs> um but ultimately, I'm super proud of this team, especially with how everything went last year and how everyone was doubting us this year. And they were getting the memes ready when we were down 15 points to Gardner Whip. <laughs> and then we overcame that. We overcame uh, a flurry of punches from Oklahoma at the very beginning. And then Oregon was just back and forth and then we got past Purdue Cavalier Cavalier? yeah I don't know what that is so I'm just going to assume it's like a trebuchet Um, Cavalier essentially is (laughs) isn't it kind of like a pirate? no okay so the I'm super Cavalier about this idea so the Cavaliers were a a unit that took on multiple units rather sorry that took on the British through the Revolutionary War. That is so anti-villain. You, you can't make that shit up. It's very American. Right, exactly. You know what? what side you know who of the war were the you Cavaliers? on during the Civil War, though? What side were you on in their Civil War? Uh, that was West Side. <laughs> I don't know how to respond my, to that. My state hadn't even been invented yet, so... Well then, surely you you your family came from either the north or the south. It's true. Fun fact about Cavaliers: Dakota is a Cavalier. She went to East Burke. Their their uh, mascot was the Cavaliers with swords as well. Okay, I still don't understand what Cavaliers are, so I'm just going to assume enthusiasm is. Your All right, I, I could be behind that. So go on, uh, L M uh, G T uh, F Y dot com. And uh, put what is a cavalier? 
L M G T F Y. Let me Google that for you. <clears throat> what is? A and we'll we'll wait for Alex to to do his thing. L I E R. I'm a great speller, even of words that I don't know. I'm gonna bing it. <laughs> Get link. Preview. Visit Bing.com. It's typing. Beautiful cityscape in the background. I'm Anyways, so bad for Bing. we'll uh, we'll go on. So uh, Texas Tech knocked off Gonzaga, seventy-five sixty-nine, which definitely was not exciting nice. as exciting as the other three games. And is that? Go ahead. Is that the upset that's not really the upset? <laughs> no, because I feel like Gonzaga's overrated. They yeah. were ranked number one for a lot of uh, this season, and I feel like it was undeserved, especially coming from the West Coast Conference, when your best win is St. Mary, and then you lose to St. Mary right? in the uh, conference championship. So well, what's interesting, though, is that Virginia is the only remaining number one seed in the tournament. And the only team from the ACC. Logan, at, re- go ahead. Which is really odd because majority of the country had at least three of the four in there. Three or four ACC teams. Even sometimes you could have went four or four if you would have like, put Florida State in there. Right, which I, what it is what I did. But as a ACC guy, Logan... And Virginia being the only ACC team in there, are you supportive of Virginia? I will pull for Virginia. That's the team I'm pulling for. I've never had anything against them. Because now, you know... kept beating us all those yeah, times, yeah. and now we're finally good and can beat you guys? I feel like it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's like you guys never really, <laughs> never really mattered, I guess. Yeah, I would agree. Cavaliers are the bad guy. Now, it works on the other side. Like, for years, like, you hate us because it was like you got beat up by us for years. But, like, it's like, oh, that's cool. Virginia's winning. That's nice. <laughs> like, like right. it was kind of like essentially like in the 2000s. I think I mentioned it on another podcast when Maryland was in a similar situation. I pulled for Maryland when the NCAA tournament because, like, they never had won the title. And that's what I'm doing. I'm pulling for Virginia. I think it would be a cool and awesome story of a team that's, like, they had some good teams in the 80s, but the 90s and 2000s, with the exception of a few teams, and now is turning into a powerhouse. It would be cool to um, see him win the national title. I agree. That would that would be amazing, and I'm not going to let that distract me when we're at but Ring of Honor. <laughs> but it, it, you you will have your eyes on the phone at points. I know it will happen. I'm, I'm not it's, pulling a Brad. It's a truly important game. I am not pulling a Brad. You will occasionally check the score. <laughs> Maybe. Listen here, Bucko. It's the biggest game in UVA history. Right. And even if oh. they lose, I, I oh. it's fine. Like, I'm okay I, with that. And actually, actually, it's the first game, so, like, you will be able to, like, be able to follow it without being distracted. It starts at 6.09 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we may be eating Korean barbecue, like, getting out at that time. Well, again, you gotta get to the fucking gate. or gotta get to fucking Madison Square Garden. I got your fucking ticket. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking wave you. I'm not coming back outside. <laughs> Do you have your ticket, by the way? Uh, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Before. It's probably a good idea. Hello? Are you guys ready for me to drop knowledge bombs? Sure. Cavaliers were loyal to the throne. What the fuck? Loyal. Uh, fake news. It's not. Hashtag fake news. They were royalists. Loyalists, you mean? Royal. Royalists. They're called loyalists. The word that let me Google this for you, Bing, says royalists, which is like the off brand version of loyalists. No. Just like Bing is the off brand version. Alright, well, they're still not villains. Well, it doesn't matter because, like, these guys aren't, like, these guys just go to college there. Right. Do that. <laughs> exactly. Also, also the Excuse fact that me, Logan, a lot of these. You are, not, you are not allowed to take the identity of some innocent college kids 
and not smash them up against the historical relevance of their past. <laughs> and then also my identity on this podcast. <laughs> also, the fact that a lot of people hold this against the team. The fact that there's only one McDonald's All American, and that was Kyle Guy. McDonald's? McDonald's All American. Excuse me. <laughs> McDonald's? Yes, McDonald's. Like McDonald's? McDonald's, yeah, McDonald's. They, they sponsor, like, the top high school players. Yeah. Ronald McDonald plays basketball? <laughs> yes. For UVA. That's amazing. Um, and before we get to our predictions, I just have to ask. I, <laughs> I was kind of about to ask that guy. Damn it, Logan, you took it from me. <laughs> Eats Does Kyle Guy <laughs> wear Fubu? I really thought you meant Fugu before. It's the puffer fish. No, it's poisonous. It, it poisonous. If it doesn't get prepared correctly, it kills you. He wears Fubu and eats McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, does Kyle Guy wear Fubu? I'm gonna say. He- so yeah, so we'll go ahead and give our predictions for the final four. I'll start. I have UVA winning it all. What? They're going over Auburn, and then they're going over Texas Tech. <laughs> this is because you don't want them to play Michigan State. Correct. If Michigan State wins, who wins? <laughs> or is it not going to happen? And it's not happening, and we're not going to talk about it. You can talk about it. I'm not going to comment on it. No, I'm going to be the brave one. I took UVA from the beginning, if you've been following our bracket contest. Who's winning, by the way? Duke. Are you winning? Um, Probably because I had UVA win it at all. I think I was the only one that has, like... Um, I, think I, had, a, I think I had Duke winning the entire You had Duke over UVA, I believe. Oh. Yeah, everybody else is done. I already won because I had UVA going to the championship. So you think UVA is going to beat Michigan State? UVA or Michigan State? All I'm doing is just flipping Duke with Michigan State. So I think Virginia is the team of destiny. Um, I know I talked to you about it earlier, but you lose to a 16 seed last year, and then you come back, bounce back, and like season on the line, five seconds left. You need to miss a free throw and somehow get the rebound. You tip it back. Everybody thinks you're just going to throw up a half court heave. You throw it to your center, and he makes a jump shot. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> do you think so? You think they can beat Michigan State? I do. Um, and I why? Be one of, I think the reason I say why, I mean, the reason I think so is because I think these are like mirror images, image teams. I think they play the exact same way. The coaches are very similar. Um, they're both very, like, they got like veteran leaders, and they both got coaches that are really good in, well. Bennett hasn't really been good in the tournament, but they're both very similar with not having like star players, like really good players that do the things that they're supposed to do. Um, I think if they play, it's going to be one of the all time classics and it's going to come down to a buzzer beater and it's going to be Virginia winning and the whole state of Virginia is going to be in uh, tears of joy. I will be glad that I'm going to be, in Richmond. I would drive to Charlottesville. There might be like riots and stuff if they win or lose. Yeah, that's true. I've never so been like out of Charlottesville. So that. like this I didn't realize how big this was to the state of Virginia. Like I follow some other UVA like um people, like one of the NASCAR analysts I follow, and like he was like this is like one of the like happiest sports moments of my life. He's like, I usually don't cry during sports stuff, but he's like, I was so happy I just started crying last night. Like, this really means a lot to the state of Virginia. They basically, it was the equivalent of them winning the championship last night. Right, and I, I think you 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 kind of have said, like, even if they lose in the Final Four, you're happy because, like, they've never, it's been a long time since they got to this level. Right. And I feel like even if you do lose, like, you're, it's good for this year, but then the expectations go up next year. I'm glad that you guys are happy with the results so far because I really think Auburn's going to make everybody sad. I wouldn't be surprised though at the same time. That's what Auburn does. Auburn ruins other people's dreams so that nobody can be happy. How so? This is is true. I'm speaking specifically from my vast one game's worth of experience when they beat my Missouri Tigers (laughs) to go on and win the uh, football 
college football championship. Cam Newton. Was that Cam Newton? Yeah, they beat the Oregon well, we, Ducks in a championship. Well, we beat them in Super Bowl 50, so he can suck an egg. <laughs> so that was your ultimate revenge. Yes, and they broke our dreams with like a – and that next game was like that 98-yard punt return to win the game. Oh, yeah, I guess Alabama. I remember that. So oh, yeah. I feel like the, the thing with Auburn, and this is just based on me just watching the game today – they don't really have size. And no, I f- their size is out. <laughs> right. I feel like that UVA can then bully them, especially with rebounds. Right. I think rebound the rebounding game, um, Virginia's gonna win. It's just gonna be a matter if Auburn can like do what Purdue did and just throw up <laughs> random shots that go in. Yeah, I can't right. have another guy like Edwards scoring forty two points. And that and that kinda happened today. Auburn only had two guys that really scored against Kentucky if you look at the box score. They had Jared Harper with twenty six and Bryce Brown with twenty four. Their next highest score was Ant Ant for Anthony McLemore with um eight points, and then the next was like seven and six. Like there's literally just two scorers you have to stop and you'll win the game. Right. I think Virginia can do that. Yeah. Just as long as they're just not like triple team like yesterday and the guy just shoots over like three people and just like drills it <laughs> like virginia wasn't even playing bad defense he was just making everything right i also think texas tech is gonna beat michigan state and i'm okay with that <laughs> why is that like a, is that is that a weird pick it would be an upset but also texas the fact are an upset to even get this far right 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 well Maybe not, because that was kind of a... I think that was kind of a weak bracket in a way. Yeah, that was a very weak bracket. But for me, though, the reason why I I like Texas Tech over Michigan State is the fact that Michigan State beat UVA two times in a row in the tournament in 2014-2015. Both times, Michigan State was highly underseeded. This is another reason why I can't watch March Madness, because I also think that Texas Tech is the bad guy based on other sports and guns they got their guns and they have guns and they're from texas and so like if auburn and texas tech go to the finals i'm just like it's bad guy versus bad guy and all the good guys are dead that's like six episodes after the anime i don't want to watch that so they're like just gonna shoot up michigan state I'm not going to touch that. Um, my point yeah, I guess I could have worded Madness. that better. Yeah, I don't think I've edited that, but I just I should have chose my words better. That's all I'll say. I didn't realize. Um, yeah. Current events. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're going to beat them. They are, with guns. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm still picking Michigan State. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, like, my, my whole got, point. They, they got my swords. Whole, my whole point there was that like March Madness it devolves into like all, all the good guys lose and all the bad guys fight for the title was that so, a single solitary sniff because you're like the good guys did make it UVA is still in there hello what should was I that leave? sorry I? <laughs> I said was that a single solitary sniff because you're like UVA are the good guys yeah, UVA are the good guys, especially after losing to a 16 seed. And as Logan said earlier, uh, so, it's a redemption story. And there so will be a movie. Humans. We got three humans, and we got one animal in the final four. So if I had become a UVA fan, then everything makes sense. This is what your life has led up to this moment. What would they call the movie? Shoosers. No, that's if that's if Duke won. Shoosers. It'll be called the Virginia Miracle. <laughs> so I can't get over the Zion's shoe thing. Shoosers would be a great name for a spoof movie. If only Duke would have won the title, that would have been a good movie. So Alex, who do you have going all the way? Uh, I just became a UVA fan. Okay. Good Good choice. So I have Texas Tech winning the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two UVAs and one Texas Tech. Oh man, tough scene. 
Um, well, with, with that out of the way, uh, we can move on to the AAF week eight in the books. Um, Alex, oh, what did oh, you think of uh, this week in AAF football? This week was bad. <laughs> I was reading on Twitter that Salt Lake City game was like the worst game of all time. It was. It was the worst game of the entire season, and that sucks. I'm a Stallions fan, and our season has blown ass constantly. And the San Diego Fleet Salt Lake Stallions first game was the best game of the year. So everyone was super excited. Oh, the rematch is going to be great. It was literally the worst game. Neither team deserved to win. Both of them should get an L. <laughs> they both should be. <laughs> they should both should be demoted. <laughs> yes. Well, what if the season ended today because of Tom Dundon being a jackass? If None of season, this would matter. If the season ended today, I mean, it would be because the league is gone, which means we would delete the subreddit, <laughs> and I would delete Bill's Twitter. The only good thing that came out of this was the podcast. <laughs> and I'm glad that we changed to the Wednesday Night Sports Podcast, even though you're listening yeah. to this on a Sunday night. Like, I'm pulling for the AAF, but, like, the way things are being talked about, I'm very nervous about things. I'm so on the opposite side of this from the drama. Like, yeah, okay, so someone threw a bitch fit. That's fine. It happens all the time, but because the AAF is a new league and the owner is a newish owner who didn't even own the league beforehand like while the season was still going on people are flipping their lids about it they just need to calm down but the fact that he said that if the nfl pa does not um join them and allow them to use nfl players then the league's just gonna shut down at the end of the year there's no reason why the aaf should exist because of this you know what i mean but that it's false and he's attempting to use that narrative as a negotiating tactic clearly it's not working uh well yeah which clearly is not working or he just <coughs> threw a, like i said he just threw a bitch fit but i mean i wouldn't listen to it i don't think that's true and it was not gonna hurt him anyway because half the guys in the league right now aren't even on a like practice squad like I mean, there's some that were in the NFL, but, like, majority of these guys aren't even in, like, a team whatsoever. Right, but they want to be a cooperative league, and that was his vision for it, was to be a cooperative league. But they weren't supposed to do that for another three years. Of course, but he bought in, he's got a bunch of money in it, and he wants to make it work right now, and if it's not going to work right now, he didn't get what he wanted, and he's going to cry about it, and that's fine. Okay. Um... So we've already talked about Stallions going over the fleet 8-3. Um, what about the Orlando Apollos going over the Memphis Express in a uh, toenail biter 34-31? livid. The sky judge giveth, the sky judge taketh away. And taketh, and taketh, and taketh, and taketh away. Can you talk I about w- <laughs> why? Or well, how you uh, feel? Tumen- Memphis was in control of this game until like the fourth quarter when it really started raining hard and the game turned not on not so much on the actions of the sky judge uh, missing a false start Uh, more it's on the punter of the express slipping uh, with a wet ball falling on the ground and not recovering it Uh, thankfully Memphis did recover it but it gave the Apollos amazing field position end of the game it was raining so hard i don't know why they were still playing (laughs) like they should have taken a weather break for at least 15 20 minutes because the rain did come off like there's no reason to be playing and like having people getting hurt like exactly especially not even the nfl yeah right if the punter can't plant his foot you can't play football uh so anyway, uh, the big deal, the big narrative and fun story here is that Mike Singletary almost killed a referee. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, he got an unsportsmanlike conduct for being on the field during play. 
uh, which usually in the NFL, that means that the coach was standing, instead of being on the sideline, he was maybe a foot inside the play area. Uh, Mike Singletary was like 10 yards into the field yelling at a referee <laughs> during a play. <laughs> And if you know anything about Mike Singletary, like, I'm surprised that referee didn't shit his pants. Because if Mike Singletary decides I don't give a shit about the rules and I'm going to charge 15, 20 yards into the field to yell at you, uh, run. Get away. I was actually surprised he wasn't ejected. Um, and is it over for Johnny Manziel? Uh, he did get mule kicked in the head. Vintage Randy <laughs> Orton! It is all over! Minotauro Nogara with the <laughs> knockout shot! <laughs> Very Mike Goldberg esque. No, I think Johnny Manziel probably plays him this week. While eating nachos? <laughs> did you see that, Logan? He did. He did eat nachos. What happened? On the Somebody ate nachos on the sideline? <laughs> At, Johnny. After he got knocked out. And was ruled out for the rest of the game. He was seen eating nachos. Does he even really care? Probably not. Well, I don't know that he could see straight at the time. And he was just like, I want nachos. (laughs) That's probably the realistic thing of what happened. (laughs) He should have been in the locker room watching the game. He just saw some guy like on the sidelines eating. And he's like, oh, what what that guy's having. Yeah. (laughs) Can I get an ice cold Coors Light too? pretty entertaining wow they have 28 men on the field no no johnny you could just see a double did they <laughs> did they say anything about ratings with the uh, manzel in has have, have they still been all right or it's probably getting better ratings than tna <laughs> like they haven't um like i feel like you know the first few weeks everybody talked about the ratings but i feel like the last few weeks like have been like hush, hush, hush. well the ratings are up uh, TNT bought a bunch of the games to play. Orlando Apollos network. Yeah, home of the Orlando Apollos. Uh, but the league is succeeding in terms of TV ratings, but they are not succeeding in terms of getting people to show up to the games. Well, and also, I guess with March Madness, it looks like ratings have went down just a little bit as well. Just like our um, podcast viewers. Well, because they, I found something on Twitter from last week. Um, last week's Saturday TNT game only had 340 viewers. Or 340,000, <laughs> <340, laughs> which, which was the 78th ranked cable telecast for Saturday. That's less than TNA. Saturday night's primetime game was 237,000, which was 112th for cable on Saturday. And the Sunday viewing on the NFL Network was 255 viewers, which was 119th on the cable telecast. But I, I think March Madness is playing a very big role in that, like pretty much having like four channels on at one time full of games. Well, they're in trouble when the NBA playoffs comes on. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's kind of like um, that's uh, you got multiple games. I mean, it's, it's good. And that's it's one of the most watched things throughout the year. So I guess I got to take it back. I guess the ratings are not up. Uh, but the fact that TNT bought more games is a positive, and it shows that people want to invest in it. Right. And I'm going back to my scenario. I would run this during the summer, right before the NFL preseason. Yeah. Because now at this point of the year, you're competing with um, with March Madness and the start of the NBA playoffs. If you could, if you could do it, say in June or July, or I guess maybe start in May, probably. You would be competing with the NBA playoffs, but once you get down to like the conference semifinals and the finals of the NBA playoffs, like it's going to be spread out more, so it's not going to be going up against like your afternoon games. Yeah, but there will like be March casualties Madness. in Phoenix, in Tempe, and in Birmingham. You're right. You're right. And in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of the East with Birmingham and Orlando. With today's win by Birmingham, that secured Birmingham a spot in the playoffs. So now our East playoffs are set with Orlando and the number one seed in Birmingham, number two. 
Uh, and that was because Birmingham beat the Atlanta Legends 17-9. It was definitely not the Murray show. We'll say that. Never believed in him. Never did. Murray non-believer burger. Right, right. We don't eat Gilbert burgers around here. Wolford yeah, burgers. You might be eating Wolford burgers. Uh, Actually, Trevor Knight's in right now. Yeah, why Why is that? I just saw that. I think, did he get hurt? I don't know. So, the only oh, thing that's boy. really on the line in the East still is, I guess, home field. Um, has Who won the... Well... I guess Orlando does Orlando does Orlando and Birmingham play one more time. Check the schedule. Because home field could be huge for that playoff game. Playoffs. <laughs> we don't talk about playoffs. Yeah, they play oh, week ten. If yeah. if the fleet beat the Apollos and the I was about to say the Memphis Express, jeez. The Express should have beaten the Apollos. If if the Fleet beat the Apollos and Birmingham beats whoever they got to play, it could set up a Week 10 game for home field. Well, that's going to kind of suck because they're going to play each other back-to-back. But it could could set up a a game for home field for that semifinal game. It kind of sucks they play back to back. That's kind of a drag in a way. I don't mind that at all in this league because it seems like any given weekend, uh, you don't know what the best team is. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's. I guess. I guess it would. No, essentially, it'd be like a two playoff games in a row. I guess. Um. Of it course, would be the funny, West. Though, if the Apollos win the first game and the Iron win the second one. <laughs> like at, on the road, like they lose the first game on the road, then beat them on the road this exactly. time. Uh, I think that would be fascinating. I don't see it happening though. No, the Iron are overrated. I agree, wholeheartedly. I, I, I feel bad because I feel like Memphis, if they would have just started a little bit better, would have been in the playoffs. <laughs> Uh, which leads us to a game ongoing right now. You know what we should do? Uh, I will send y'all if if you don't have a link already. Um, the AF.com website has a live stream. Yeah, I'm watching it right now. You can also get Spurrier cam, but it's off right now because he's not coaching. Logan, are you watching it? I've followed it on Twitter. Um, what we should do is we should do like an MS T three K and just for the next 13 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Let's just riff it. Let's, well, let's watch the raw stream. So we know that we're all in sync. Some guy just went down with his leg. I mean, that made it sound like he lost his leg. <laughs> you know, they might have to amputee amp- amputate his leg. They might need to amputee his ass. <laughs> We're going to send him right to the prosthetic store. Got to remember the Alamo. That's what they did in the Alamo days. They just cut people's legs off. I think they're trying to massage his leg. Remember, maybe that guy is just really creepy. So this is unprecedented stuff, guys. We are live streaming the game right now. Arizona's up 15-6, to six, by the way. Yeah, What what is... What is that old white guy saying to the uh, the player right now? You feeling all right? <laughs> I'm trying to be creepy with this, man. We're so good at this. He's like, hey, you want to go to Olive Garden later? <laughs> shout out! Like- <laughs> shout out to oh. Yvonne for uh, for noticing that uh, Logan is obsessed with um, Olive Garden. Also. Um- in the um Hoover formerly no, in the formerly of the Hoover State fan club now brothers and geez us Christ um made fun of us because we all say the Olive Garden instead of Olive Garden, he said in that episode. 
We if did. If you are on such a familiar term with Olive Garden that you call it Olive Garden, you go there too much, and you probably have an unlimited pasta pass. <laughs> Do you have a black card to Olive Garden, Logan? I should. Every time yeah, they have an Olive Garden. Every time they have unlimited pasta, we have to go to go. Oh my my god! Why don't you? I mean, bring... it's like it's like $13, and get all you can eat with yeah. salad and soup and everything and breadsticks. Damn, pal. Looks like we're going to have a San Antonio third down and probably two. It looks like. It's two. So since everybody has um, an issue with us saying the Olive Garden, when me and Nick get together, we go to the Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> oh my god, I love the Outback Steakhouse. You um, should call it the Outbacks. The Outbacks? Going over there to the Outbacks. And Alex has so a fetish when it comes to the uh, container that the Blooming Onion is in for some reason. That's true. <laughs> I'll order like three Blooming Onions and throw them away just to keep you. <laughs> Don't even eat it. <laughs> No, it's disgusting. Packaging is great, though. That's kind of weird. I wish this camera wasn't so jumpy. Yeah, all these, like, that. that was really weird. Like, I, my brain was trying to comprehend what was going on. Uh, this Skycam that gives you seizures brought to you by Wheels Up. Little Caesars. <laughs> Little Caesars. Ass up, wheels down. So, um, while we're watching this game and, you know, talking about stuff... Um, since you are changing up how you eat, Nick, what will you be ordering off the um, Outback menu now? Um, what the hell Dallas is this Springs play? Chicken. Whoa, trick play! He's going deep. Oh man, oh, I'm ahead. I'm that would have. <laughs> well, that's why you should just be wear it, watching the stream we're watching. I am watching the stream on the AAF app. But did you click the exact link he sent? Just watch the oh. link that we're watching. I mean, it's the same thing, but, like, you're probably a hick since you've been, like, watching it regularly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've had it on since we started the podcast. So I would probably eat a salad and... Something chicken-wise, probably? Uh, yeah. Alice Springs chicken is really good. Wait, 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 wait. You're on a diet? Yeah, because... Or more so... I wouldn't say a diet. It's more so just eating better. Yeah, uh, because... You remember when I thought I had kidney stones? Uh, well, I saw the doctor, and he's like, you either have kidney stones or you have diverticulitis. Yeah. But the fact that my pain levels have gone from a 6 to a 2, he says he's not really concerned. Yeah. And so he doesn't feel like he needs to put me on any like medications. What exactly is diverticulitis? Uh, it means your colon is inflamed and pus is coming out of it. Oh, man, pus. Yeah. So, like, Brock Lesnar had this when he was in the UFC. He's just, like, from eating too much cheeseburgers? Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. Uh, Brock Lesnar had this when he was in the UFC, and, like, he fought Alistair Overeem, and Overeem just kept kicking him where his diverticulitis <laughs> was. You remember when um, Brock Lesnar had his first match back against John Cena at Backlash? Uh, 2012, and yeah. and he's like, "Oh my stomach, my stomach!" <laughs> right, right into, oh, <laughs> right into <laughs> the medical tent. <laughs> well, that works Stay out there perfect. a while, don't you? You can get late hit and go right into the tunnel tent. I mean, there could be a tunnel in there, maybe, yeah, maybe I think underneath you saw the tent. A tunnel with light at the end. My stomach. <laughs> I forgot all about that, but now I remember it very vividly. Yeah. And I was like, is this a work or a shoot? Did I tell you guys I used to be a big fan of the WWE or WWF? I think everybody was at one point. Everybody was at one point. Well, I, my story is that I was a huge fan of... Uh... Oh, sh 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 I had the name in my head. I could see his face. Billy Gunn, The Rock, no. Triple H, Undertaker, Chris Benoit. Oh my! <laughs> and I was rooting for him in the Royal Rumble that he won against. It was him versus the Big Show, and he managed to get the Big Show out of the ring. And he, I was so happy for him 
And then I woke up, uh, like, you know, six months later or however long it was, and saw that he had killed his entire family. That was, like, three family. years later. It was three years later? Yeah. And I was like, I guess I don't like that sport anymore. <laughs> After, like, the great feel-good moment of him and Eddie Guerrero at the end of WrestleMania. <laughs> so somebody told me that they think that they're just going to do a repeat of that with the Four Horsemen at the end of this year's WrestleMania. They're going to have them kill their families? But, yes. That, how does that make I hate to go off the topic of this game, but um, how does that make sense? Like, isn't Charlotte and Becky versus they hate, they hate each other? Um, so the theory is is that Becky won't be pinned. Or, sorry, Charlotte won't be pinned. So Becky will pin Ronda. So therefore, Charlotte, Charlotte keeps... Charlotte still loses, technically. I mean, she doesn't lose her title, but like, wouldn't you still be pissed off that you didn't win the second title? No, because in, in the end, they're all still... BFFs, and they realize. But like, but like on the show wise, like Charlotte's supposed is like wants to beat them all, like to trying to prove who's better. Like, I guess I, I know what you mean, like, but it doesn't make sense. Right. And Kurt Angle was on the juice. Oh man, you should see him now. His his neck. I mean, his whole like his head looks like he looks like a a, a thumb, like a human <laughs> thumb. I just saw him on Twitter the other day, and he's like, I know it's not what my fans. Clean. He looks like a human thumb, man. As we're talking about human thumbs. What, is, what are you doing, Kat? We're trying to watch AAF football. <laughs> Which one is that? Stedman or Miz? Logan? I don't know. Your, your mic did something weird. Because the punter or the kicker has a huge erection. Um... Which which cat was it that was messing with uh, you? Stashy. Miz? She's like messing with something, yeah, the Miz. Because <laughs> you call her Miss Stashio, right? Yeah. Oh, she oh. came to play. Oh, look at this. They're going for it. Did they get it? God, this is so weird watching it on this camera angle. <laughs> the sky cam it's so much better when they yeah. just use it as a madden cam instead of trying to do it from all these different angles well there's another camera you can watch there's, oh, oh oh all 22 oh no please don't do that that's an awful oh, the booth yeah booth camera but it, it's oops i accidentally clicked all 22 uh oh here we go i'd actually rather watch that it's super shaky this is aaf raw <laughs> Forget the toss, the money. We don't care, we don't do it all. You know it's crazy as it sounds. Crazy as it sounds. Nothing's forever. I don't hate the all twenty-two cam because it feels like you're just watching up there watching the game until they move the dang camera and like. I saw that they moved it up to the scoreboard. <laughs> but I actually, don't hate all twenty-two. I actually, during one of our AMAs this year, uh, we did. Uh, female assistant wide receivers coach. I feel like San, the San Antonio's got to score twice and they got no urgency I know it uh, we, we uh, interviewed Jennifer King with an AMA on the subreddit and I asked her at the end of it it's like how do I get a hold of coaches film and she goes that's way above my pay grade did you ask her to be uh, a mod uh, I did not <laughs> I felt she didn't have enough reddit experience <laughs> But it's like funny though, like because on the NFL you can like pay for like like a certain amount a month and get like the footage. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. AAF doesn't offer it. It's great if you want to be a content creator because you can pull whatever uh, shots you need and you can you know tell right. it. Right. It's really good for like blogs and stuff of teams and stuff. It's it has lots of excellent uses. If you want to do uh, like if you want to study tape, that's what you need. I feel like this clock is not going down fast enough. <laughs> I, I was thinking we wouldn't be talking this long about it. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's only 15 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it. I guess we're in the middle of a timeout. San Antonio is, like, using all their timeouts, even though they shouldn't. And they, they, just, like, also, are... they have broadcast timeouts also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> But it would be odd for just doing a broadcast timeout at second and nine. Um, 
I feel like San Antonio has no urgency here to get back into the game. You're absolutely right. Like that running play that they just did with Kenneth Farrow. Uh, that wasn't Kenneth Farrow. Uh, stop pan on switching back to the raw camera. Excuse you. If you're watching the All 22 cam, it was like, hey, an interesting thing just happened. Let's pan away. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back too. That was annoying. I couldn't tell what was going on. It also shows like the lack of attendance up top. Like when they zoom really out like does. that, they shouldn't do that. Did a lot of people not show up this game? Well, it's still probably around thirty thousand people, it, but of it's course. still really good. At the get him! Level. Get him! Get him! Fumble! 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 Hot shots ball! Hot shots ball! So I feel like the lower bowl is like sold out pretty well. Remember, this is a very big dome too. That is. All right. Well, that was exciting. Um, should we just declare this game? Should I know there's still a chance that they could still win, no, but should we just declare this so we don't see her through the rest of the game? The score recording? hasn't. <laughs> they've they've scored one field goal in. Because I do gotta be up at work. Second half. Yeah, that's Maybe fine. Do, do we have a hoop stank fan club mailbag? Any questions? Oh, uh, we um, we don't have any questions. I forgot to ask. It's all good. We'll so we'll go ahead and we'll end it after that. Uh, there is a random question okay. that has nothing to do with our podcast whatsoever, but was asked in the chat. Okay, what is it? So, you were the one at the Uncouncil today? <laughs> you been the UN Council? I think I'm lagging, because you guys keep like going in and out. I think it's my connection. Oops. So, what did you ask, Alex? Uh, I don't know, but I was going to say I have a question, which is when are we going to watch an episode of Z Z <laughs> Xavier Renegade Angel? Probably not tonight. I do got to be up early. Yeah, I got to finish this game too. Probably won't be for another week. Yep. Because It'll probably be Tuesday or Wednesday, I'd imagine. Of next week. I'm looking forward to it. I watched it again because I couldn't wait and I loved it. Season one is just so much better. Oh lord. Alrighty, well my stomach just now. Uh everybody, thank you for uh joining in and listening to our glorious podcast. Uh <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at AF Wednesday. Um thank you for being patient with us uh as we try to find content and realize that the Hot Shots Commanders game was not over yet, so we decided to MS T three K it a little bit and then started talking about thumb heads and whatnot it was a lot of fun <laughs> and uh we'll see y'all next week as we talk about nba playoffs we might not talk about aaf i don't know we'll see depends on uh if alex can convince me we might talk about my first experience in new york city and what weird things i came across oh oh that's gonna be exciting all right so thank you again Say your goodbyes, Alex and Logan. I don't want to go. Logan. Bye. Oh, uh, good night, everybody.